Hub for a smarter you. Well, you're welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Tech Hub, your one-stop platform for all things tech in Africa. My name is Mr. Frank, and I always love to do this with you. Now, quickly, before we go into the subject matter of today, did you hear the part where government regulators are really hammering Instagram um, uh, for not doing or not acting responsibly acting as soon as possible um, to stem the tide of racial abuse in the, in the board. I say yes, they need to be hit more. Because the truth is that as a social um, or a microblogging site or a site where people come to dump all sorts of information, um, you are supposed to be held responsible if somebody does something to hurt another person, right? Immediately. I mean, I was listening to Super Sports, was that two days ago? And I watched as regulators were hammering one of the representatives from Instagram. I was asking the person, you have AI, you have bots that go around, you know, that, you, that go around your platform. Wouldn't you be able to, with the speed of lightning, detect swear words, use the N word on people, use words that are, are, are demeaning and disheartening to people? I mean, they have better wake up. I mean, they need to hit them the more. They better wake up. If you can't hold them responsible as a publisher, they need to hold them responsible as a platform that gives people the freedom to publish what they like. It has to come to an end. You know, it, no, you don't, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not what it is. Why do I spend money buying data and I, and I have an Instagram account? I am one of the reasons why you are making money and you're supposed to protect me and you don't do that. This should be a lesson to every um, entrepreneur today. If you have a platform that people, you know, um, gather together to collaborate, you should be able to protect everyone in that particular uh, platform and not open them to all sorts of, you know, abuse and the rest of them. And people should stop that. This is 2021 for crying out loud. It's not 1984, 1985, or not, it's not even 2000. Wake up and stop this racial abuse thing. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not human. It's actually not human. Anyway, aside that, um, I think we should just go straight into our conversation for today. And my guest has been waiting, and he'll be joining us virtually via Zoom. We always say thanks to Zoom for, um, for connecting us. And um, I will introduce him straight up. His name is Loki Uwakwe. He's the CEO of uh, Sabi Exchange. And Loki will be joining us to talk about, to give his perspective on uh, the CBN's proposed e Naira and all that comes with it. Thanks for joining us on Tech Hub, um, Lucky. Hello, Mercy. Thank you uh, um, to this evening for giving me the invite. It's a pleasure. Uh, absolutely. It's great to have you here. Quickly, let's get your thoughts on this e -Naira, you know, issue. Um, first of all, I want to ask you, do you trade in crypto? Before I would ask you the next question. Yes, I still um, hold crypto assets and I trade in crypto. Yes. I, I didn't. I didn't get that. I just hope my my the technical guys can help give me audio. Um, if you can answer that question again, please. You, do I you said, trade in crypto? Yes. Yes. So I is, trade in crypto and I still hold crypto assets. Yes. Beautiful. So is this? Would you say this is the federal government's attempt at squishing at nipping the cryptocurrency? You know practice in Nigeria in the bot by introducing this Inera um, platform? Okay, um, I, I don't think it's the federal government attempt on squashing um, crypto trade in Nigeria. Rather, it's an attempt um, by the federal government through central bank to introduce their own alternatives to the privately issued digital currency that is existing right now around the world, not just even in Nigeria. But um, it's just unfortunate in terms of the approach to which they are going about the entire process. We feel um, they've not done adequately well uh, in terms of how this should go in a normal term, especially when uh, they are issuing a digital currency or central bank digital currency that is meant to um, affect the entire nation. I don't think they've really uh, done enough or done it rightly, even though it's still a, a pilot phase or still um, something that is meant to come out in a few weeks from now. Let me stay um, with you a bit on this cryptocurrency issue. Um, in as much as you have made it 
very clear that it is not the federal government is not a CBN's attempt at squashing um, cryptocurrency trading and practice in Nigeria. Uh, the acceptability uh, to many is not really there in the sense that they feel um, it is it will come in competition with crypto and it is it will be. Um, controlled by the government. And you know what happens in Nigeria when things are controlled by the government. You call customer care, you don't get the right answer. Um, uh, you are not really sure of the security in the situation. Cyber security is really an issue. W what are your thoughts on that? Okay, my thought on, on it is that, um, again, the foundation of the reason why even private digital currencies like Bitcoin or other digital currencies that are out there um, are in existence today have not really been solved. What I mean by that is uh, putting the Naira or any other digital currency or any other fiat currencies of any nation in central bank digital form, like the CBDC of, or, or Project Giants as it's called, does not necessarily solve the real problem. Uh, what, what I mean is uh, people have lost faith um, to a large extent in terms of what their fiat currencies can do. People have lost faith in terms of how it's been able to preserve the real value of, uh, of purchasing power. People have lost faith in terms of um, the over supply of uh, natural, national, um, national currencies. People have lost faith to a great extent. I think that problem has not been solved. So putting uh, the Naira or any other fiat currency digital form does not necessarily fix those problems. Of course, there are still advantages that come with um, the e naira but I, I still don't i still don't see it as a solution to um to the problem that cryptocurrencies like bitcoin thrive in today's world um they've not really fixed it so I, i'm still concerned around it but even with that i know it's still possible for uh fiat uh, currencies to exist side by side with privately issued digital currencies like uh, uh bitcoin but how is Nigeria going about it? We've not gone about it in the most rightful way. We've not gone about it in the most rightful way. We've not gone about it in a manner that would have required um, better level of transparency as it ought to be. Uh, this for me is, is the greatest concern and it's most likely might be a reason why people uh, would lose or would not have the full trust um, or need per se. A lot of persons are beginning to ask questions in terms of the selection process, the criteria, and um, why did they even go as far as choosing the Caribbean company? I have my own uh, reasons for even wanting to ask the same question. First, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria had uh, issued all financial institutions not to deal with companies that have to do with anything around uh, cryptocurrency. So technically, from the eye of the Central Bank, they've banned banks from participating or relating with anybody that has to do with anything digital currency in, in fact today in fact but lucky lucky going on, okay I, I, I really wanted to even, I was going to go into the issue of them getting a foreign company, um, a bit incorporated to handle the design. But before I go there, you are sure that in no way will this digital currency improve the value of the Naira? I, I do not see how it's going to improve the value of the Naira. Remember, the value of Naira is not derived from um, just by changing the form to which it is today. I think um, values are gotten from the uh, certain economic indices of which I think we do not improve those economic indices by just changing the form to which Naira is today. When Nigeria uh, become more of an exporting nation, uh, when Nigeria begins to manufacture more of the goods and services which other nations will need, then I think we'll begin to create value uh, for the Naira in terms of purchasing power. But putting uh, Naira in, in a digital form, or e Naira as it's called today, doesn't necessarily um, improve its purchasing power, if you ask me. And I'm not seeing any indications or indices that will help me say otherwise as of today. So because of this, I am pretty sure or confident that um, uh, the e Naira does not in any way um, help Wow. Uh, the purchasing power, the value of what the Naira wow. uh, would be. I, I, um, I, lucky, in the next shortest possible time, no. Whoa, lucky. I mean, that's a pretty sad, sad narrative, but I, I really wish it was going to resurrect the Naira from what it is to what the ideal, you know, um, value that Nigerians want the Naira to be. But quickly, 
Let's talk about eNaira. Of course, it, it will be launched 1st of October uh, 2021. Let's talk about eNaira versus, versus um, digital banking. How will this eNaira work? Okay, but based on the white, the 57 uh, page white paper that was released um, to the public um, through um, public forums or through their uh, website at, at the time when it was released, um, we were told or we were informed that it will work almost in the same way like some sort of uh, using the traditional channel, in this case financial institutions will help to also uh, distribute this. But at this time of pilot phase, central bank will play a very key role. They recently made an announcement around um, the release of speed wallets. Speed wallets will become that wallet that will house or that will hold the digital currency called e naira And the central bank, in its wisdom, have um, taken that uh, responsibility to house it as of today. Hopefully, uh, we were also in, uh, informed that um, other private banks will be allowed to develop their own kind of wallets that will house the e naira um, uh, in terms of the pilot phase, people are expected to um, go through their private fin uh, banks and through the, this private bank, they will be uh, given rooms to participate either as a merchant Absolutely. or some sort of as a wholesale. Okay. Merchants in the sense that um, people, sorry? Okay, uh, yeah, I just wanted to round up your point as we are really, really running out of time. Okay, so merchants, in, uh, it's in two ways, retail and in wholesale. Wholesale will be for more from some sort of uh, uh, settlement between banks and the central banks or some sort of financial institution. While in retail, it will be more on um, single individuals or persons uh, per se who want to just settle their inner and they will host the speed wallets, which I still see another contradiction um, in that aspect, especially when central bank is beginning to play the role of what private banks should be. I still see that there is um, an overlap of duties, which I do right. not expect central banks to, be, to right, play Loki. that role in any foreseeable future, else All right, will Loki. most likely make private banks a bit irrelevant. All right, Loki, this is a conversation we are definitely going to have again, because the time we even have to talk about this is not even enough at all. But thank you so much for joining us on today's edition of Tech Hub. Thank you so much, Loki. Mwakwe, um, the CEO of Sabi Exchange. Thank you. Tech Hub, for a smarter you.